All right. Well, welcome back to How to Protect Your Assets Through Chaos, Conflict, and Crisis. I changed the title up a little bit. Welcome to Protecting Your Assets Through Chaos, Conflict, and Crisis, and Achieving Portfolio Performance. I want to thank everybody for coming in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed what we did last week about how I had to do a retake on the uh, the debt crisis that was coming. I'm going to build upon that a little bit more today because as I keep saying every week that we're holistically being attacked and the encumbrance on our freedom is coming in the form of unprecedented debt, which ultimately leads to the, depre the depreciation of our currency and the loss of our purchasing power. It becomes a decadence and that unconventional warfare ultimately, ultimately leads to the destruction of wealth and the destruction of the family and the increase of social unrest. So today's most effective weapon against us being used is debt. And so we're gonna to continue to attack it. And I'm gonna show you how we can uh, identify where the debt is attacking us. And then later on, if you stick with me, I'll show you how you actually can take debt and turn it into your favor uh, and, and counter attack to protect your assets. Uh, and why do I know? about this because I've actually been through this before. Uh, as you know, I've said it many times of what I've gone through, that I've actually had it all, I lost it all, went through a chapter 13, and then came out at a higher net worth and thriving in the headwinds. And I've gone through chaos, conflict, and crisis, and I've come out on the other side looking, looking ahead and actually getting real insights and in how the real system works. And so I want to bring that to you because I feel like it's my professional responsibility to bring you the education, uh, and help you to make some decisive actions with real data, with insights and verified data, because it's the most prepared that always wins in these types of battles and during these times. And the way you win is doing three things specifically to start with. You have to get educated. You have to take quick and decisive action and you limit your costs and conflicts. OK, and so what we're showing you here today is part of the education. And you can go and learn more from the website at www.gritrust.com. And you can look through the website and some of the past uh, uh, videos that we've done as well. But we're bringing you the verified independent facts. So if you can stay with us for the next 8 to 12 minutes, uh, I'm going to show you at the end how you can take next steps and taking advantage of some of these opportunities. As I said, the most prepared wins every time. So. In the midst of all this confusion, complexity, it brings disruptions, inefficiencies and misalignments in the markets, and it creates substantial opportunities and only ready for those who are ready to seize them to jump on and pounce on these. So I want to show you how maybe you can take advantage of some of these inefficiencies. So let's go ahead and get started. So today I want to start with you know, kind of stitching a little bit of stuff together. You've seen me week over week talking about this piece and that piece. And, that, and I want to start stitching it together for you a little bit. If you were with me at the beginning of the year, I did an, uh, 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 some navigational beacons of what we're going to see coming in 2024. And so now it's only 30 days ago, right around 30 days ago that I did this. And I want to show you where we are now. I, did, I said that looking forward, you're going to see that the Fed is going to decrease Interest rates, government spending is going to increase. You can see the return of inflation, bank failures, stock market cratering, and recession is going to be redefined. Okay, that was about a month ago. Now let's look at what's going on today from last week. Okay, Bloomberg put out last week that $560 billion property warning hits the bank from New York to Tokyo. Okay, what is this going on here? Well, as I started saying in the past couple of weeks that these banks, especially community banks, with a, with a lot of uh, commercial real estate debt on their books, they're going to come to maturity. They got a real problem, and they've been uh, on the Fed's backdoor bailout, the BTFP, the Bank Term Funding Program, which is coming to a close in the next sixty days. And so you're going to start to see that as these banks are not going to have that uh, fail safe anymore, now it's going to start to show again what's on their balance sheets, and these maturities are going to come to fruition. So it was just last week that I was finishing up how a debt crisis is on the horizon, and all of a sudden the news came out about the uh, Bank of Bank of New York, and how the Bank of New York all of a sudden this, this actually just came out today, only a couple hours ago, that the New York Community Bank, New York Community Bank Corp, collapse near the 27 lows after it starts talking with the regulators have been revealed, meaning they were talking with the regulators and they started showing about their uh, uh, requirements 
about conformity with uh, uh, compliance on their balance sheet, with the maturities of the securities that they're holding. And they're having some real issues there. And their stock took a plunge near 27 year lows. OK, that's actually with news that was just out today. It's been news that's been coming out all week that New York Community Bank is on the verge of uh, an imminent collapse here as well. And this is what we talked about, that it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come. Now, I just had, you know, it's interesting, I, all these little things that I, that, I, that I look at and I see, you know, if you've gone through this crisis, you can see the signs. Interestingly enough, I just had a conversation with someone the other day that I got a text on my phone of someone who was uh, pitching me that they have new low commercial loan rates that we're now, we have so much money, we need to close by the at the end of the quarter of 24 and we're going to put out 0% interest rates. And I was saying, well, here we go again. This is how the crisis happened back in 08, where the underlying, guide, the underwriting guidelines started getting loosened and loosened and loosened. Interest rates were going lower and lower and lower. And they do that because there's more money being made by these so-called bankers. They're not really bankers. These so-called money movers, they make more money in fees by moving money than the actual money makes money. So they make money in the transaction fees but the investors end up losing because they go into bad deals. And you start seeing it where the pitches are starting to come. And you're going to see more and more and more of this. We're not going to check for this. We're not going to check for that risk. We're going to go with high LTVs, lowest interest rates, because they're trying to get more competitive. And the only way that business gets competitive is by being doing a race to zero interest rates or a race to how loose the credit can be. So you're not going to see the big, big, big institutional, too big to fail banks doing this. But you can see more of the private credit, more of the private investors doing this stuff. Where a lot of money is going into private credit now, that's going to be, uh, a, it can be a time bomb too. There's a lot of pitfalls there, and we'll talk about this in another episode. But uh, going into private credit is going to be, a, we'll, we'll talk about that in the future at another time, because I want to stay focused on here as to what's being told to you in the news. And so I make that point about what's, coming out and what's coming in through my text, because I'm starting to see, as I had given you the outlooks and the navigational beacons at the beginning of the year, 30 days ago, now I'm starting to see the signs. That text was one of them. This is another one, this chart that you see here. And here's another one that actually came out today as well. If you'd notice, Fed Chair Powell was actually on 60 Minutes on Sunday, talking about how everything is fine and everything is fine. And now the, the articles are coming out. People are starting to see that Fed Chair Powell is starting to channel Ben Bernanke, assuring everything is fine. Now, if you remember, if you went through this crisis in 2008, when it happened, that Bernanke talked about the subprime contagion. And the contagion was, it was under control. It is not going to spread. It is minimized just to a few people. It is minimized just to a few banks into a particular sector of the market. It's not going to spread like a contagion. Right, like inflation was transitory. Right, it was going to stay for a short period of time, and that's not going to be an issue. And now they're saying that everything is just fine with these community banks. So now I'm actually going to go on record today and go back to what I said 30 days ago, and I'm actually going to go out and say what's going to happen in the order that's going to come. I'm telling you that the bank failures are coming. Fed is going to decrease their rates sooner than everybody thinks they're doing it. There's a lot of bets going on. It's going to be in the third quarter. It's going to be in the fourth quarter. It's coming sooner than you think. Fed is going to decrease rate, which is going to increase government spending, which is going to bring the return of inflation here, which is going to help the stock market come down to a crater, which then will be in a recession, a technical recession. And of course, they're going to have to redefine what a recession is because naturally we're in a uh, an election cycle year. And so politics and propaganda will come into play as to how we're going to redefine and reshape all of this. So that's my briefing for today. You're going to start seeing it come little and little and little. So with all that said, I would say I always want to say that, you know, we're in the midst of chaos, crisis and conflict. Uh, I welcome anybody who would like to challenge what I'm putting up here to give me a ring, reach out to me, because as I say, I'm always open to these conversations and we're living in these five C's and open dialogue is important to have in the midst of these five C's, the chaos, the crisis, the conflict, complexity and confusion. So again, I offer anybody the opportunity to give me a call. If you'd like to get more of this information about how you can get more insights, more information, and learn how to actually take advantage of this and put debt as a weapon on your side, 
Okay, we're going to actually have uh, some webinars coming up in the not too distant future. And we can show you in those webinars too, how you can gain more clarity and confidence to protect your assets, grow your wealth in a sound and efficient manner. So I'll hold these private sessions every week, certainly come back every week for five or 10 minutes. And then we are going to have a bigger, longer, more insightful. Uh, but we're in the process of doing those preparations now. You can get on the email list because uh, that's going to be a private list. We're not going to really broadcast that. So get on our list. You can go to more, M-O-R-E dot G-R-I trust dot com. Get on the list. We want to hear from you. We want to help you. But part two is up to you. We can deliver the education, but you have to take the quick and decisive action. So take action. Jump on that URL, more.gritrust.com. Put your name on the list. And let's get you a private invitation out to the longer, bigger webinars as well. Until then, I'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody, for attending. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care.